So to kick it off, one of the big things, and, and you see this right now in the sport, is uh, you know big swim baits, glide baits. They're all the rage. Uh, you know, there's lots of different ones out there on the market. People, you know, showcasing them. A lot of different places that you can fish them. A lot of different techniques, and they're a lot more versatile than a lot of people really thought. And I'm, I'm no different. I've loved swim baits ever since they came out. My first swim bait that I ever fished was a, a tournament we fished out in California. I went out there, bought myself one of those giant tennis shoe size swim baits. The first day on Clear Lake, the first bite I ever got was a 10 plus pounder on it, and I was hooked. But I learned back then that there's a whole lot more to it than that. It's not just about uh, tying on a big bait. You know, you, you have to use them in the right place at the right time. And the bait has to be designed properly. So what I like is having something that's really flexible. And one of my favorite bigger swim baits is this 575 Rage Swimmer right here. So you can use other ones, other sizes. This technique that I'm going to show you, this rigging technique, um, is, is something that, that's going to really work for both. So what I've got is uh, an inline system to rig this and make it like some of those high priced uh, swim baits that have a, a treble hook to them. And what I like about it is that I can adjust the weight of this so that I can make it run at different depths and more importantly at different speeds. A rage swimmer is really truly balanced and it has, you know, it just has that real slow wag to it with that ribbed body and that fat body that really make it special. So what I've done is actually just threaded this on and have a treble hook in it. But there's a couple of key things that really make it different. So I've got a, a little a rivet that holds it in place. It's kind of like a little stopper here on this end. Then I also have one on the nose. You know, I mean, adding the one to the nose is not absolutely 100% necessary, but uh, it does help. And then the other thing is to keep this balanced, to always want to have it riding correctly in the water, I've taken a little lead wire and wrapped my treble hook. So I've got this one rigged with a little number two treble hook. You can adjust the size. I typically put it right into the bait like this right here uh, so that it rides good. And again, I've got a you know Strike King Tour Grade Tungsten bullet weight, the same thing you'd use for a Texas rig, right there on the nose of it. You can peg it. I prefer to keep it sliding like that because, again, when you finally hook a fish, it keeps that there's nothing but the hook in his mouth. Typically, that swim bait, uh, you know, the raid swimmer will slide up the line. This is going to slide up the line, and they have no weight to throw there at all. And compared to the other ones where the hook is attached, it just makes a big difference in the number of fish that you're going to land with it. So let me show you a little closer exactly um, how I go about doing it. So first and foremost, all I do is take a straight shank worm hook and take a pair of side cutters and clip it off and tie it on. It's basically my needle. You could use a sewing needle, but for a 20-pound test line like this, or if you're going to throw it on big line, um, I just like to take a hook and, and cut it off. It just needs to be straight shank uh, style hook. And then I'm just going to grab my Rage Swimmer. Um, this is one of my favorites right here, this Carolina Chrome. Uh, you know, it has all of that sparkle and flash in it, and it's just so mesmerizing when it's coming through the water that they just really bite it especially if you got this thing riding up high in the water column on a bright sunny day it just gives off so much flash that it, it really uh really really makes a big difference so first and foremost on your line before you tie this on you have to put your bullet weight on there first and you have to put one of those uh you know one of those rivets and those rivets you can just basically get at any uh uh you know, at, at really at any store. So I'm going to put this first rivet again on. So it's, I'm going to put it on there first. Well, I got to put the bullet weight on first. I'm ahead of myself here. Put the bullet weight on and then put a rivet basically pointing backwards on your line. And this is go, this goes to your rod like, like this right here. And so that's, that's basically going to be sliding up and down your line. And then you tie this uh, this threaded needle hook on right here. And once you, once you have that on there, all I'm going to do is take it and look at where the belly of that is, the underside of it is. I'm going to poke it right through the middle and then just have it come out. And again, just only about, you know, uh, less than a half an inch down. And then once that slides through, I can clip that off. I'm going to slide another one of these on from the bottom, tie my hook on, and that's where I end up with this whole complete rig like this. So again, 
I'll just pull this out just so you fully understand exactly what I've got. I've got a bullet weight, uh, a rivet, and that goes into the nose on this side, and you can just press that in there, and it just acts as a stopper. So you can catch a bunch of fish on this without tearing this, this bait up at all right here. I mean, it, it really lasts really for a long time with that rivet again. It's just basically a cork. And so the same thing I have on the bottom side, you can see I've got a rivet. You can you put a, uh, if you want your hook a little further back, I like to have mine closer to the head. It seems like, especially smallmouth and big spots, they really go for these and they target hitting that, it's just smashing it in the head. So I like to have that treble hook real far forward. And again, having that lead wire wrapped on there is, is really great for balance. You don't have to do it. Um, I mean, you can use this with no weight at all and run it up on the surface, but I can also put, you know, a half ounce uh, tungsten weight on there and, and run this thing a lot deeper and a lot faster. And with that lead wire on there at those faster speeds, it just keeps it perfectly balanced and riding true all the time. That lead wire, all I do is go to the, you know, I go to the Bass Pro Shops, to the fly tying shop, and you can buy different sizes, different diameter of it, but it's just, it's just fine, you know, lead wire. You can just take a piece off. I, I use about four or five inch piece, wrap that all the way on there, run it through the eye, and it just tightens right to itself. You don't have to put any super glue or anything on it. And just like that, you've got a line through treble hook swim bait um, that has a ton of flexibility and versatility as far as being able to adjust it for different fishing conditions. You know, there's nothing wrong with throwing a swim bait on just a, a belly weighted single hook, uh, but your hooking percentage is just so much higher on this. Again, it's so good for smallmouth and spotted bass. They, they try to kill a, a big bait fish or a big, you know, a big shad like this is what they think it is going through the water. And, you know, they hit it a lot of times with their mouth closed and you're just going to catch them with that treble hook. You can even use, I've got that, you know, a must add stinger treble that they build for swim baits. You can even add one of those to the back if you, if you want to. But I have great success with this right here. Um, it fishes extremely well. I like to throw it um, on, a, on a pretty stout rod. This is a, a seven and a half foot medium heavy action. It's a KVD GC8. It's one of my favorites for throwing a swim jig or big swim baits for, you know, football jigs, things like that. So it's, it's long. I can cast it, a lo you know, this bait a long ways, and it really gives uh, me a lot of leverage when I, when I hook a big fish on it. I've got it with one of the new Lou's Hyper Mag reels. If you haven't seen this reel, go check one out at your local tackle store. I mean, it is amazing. The Hyper Mag has always been one of my favorite reels. This new upgraded, updated vision, or version is uh, incredible. It's got a new um, braking system in it. Uh, it's super smooth. You just can't almost backlash thing. It's, it's probably the easiest cast and reel that I've ever had, and it feels like butter all the time in your hands. It's super lightweight, just great balance. Uh, it is definitely a winner. It's got a super oversized power handle to it, um, and it's my favorite setup. So I use a lot of Hyper Mags for those techniques where you're really needing to have a lot of torque and a lot of power to, to pull fish out of heavy cover, um, you know, to, to wind them in, uh, you know, with a, with a big bait in their mouth again for big swim baits, things like that. It's just a, it's a fantastic reel that's super lightweight and uh, man, they just last forever. I've got some of my original hyper mags from, the, from day one that I have that are still functioning and still feel just like they did out of the box. So it's fantastic reel from Lou's, one of my favorites. So this is, again, uh, a great technique that you can use on any size rage swimmer. I mean, you can, you can build a, a downsized version to the 375. Um, if I go to some of those smaller ones, I typically use a lot less weight to it, and I'll use it on a spinning rod. I do the exact same thing. If I want a 325 rage swimmer with a treble hook on it, um, you know, I can, I can rig that up. I can put it on a spinning rod with eight pound braid, cast it a mile, and again, for, uh, you know, for creek fishing and things like that, it's just awesome. So the guy who taught me this in the very beginning showed me that just for that, and that was Ott Defoe. So Ott grew up fishing in Tennessee on a lot of those rivers. He, you know, he runs a jet boat up there. He's fishing these clear rivers that are real low, uh, you know, a lot for smallmouth, spotted bass, things like that. And just using a real small swim bait with a treble hook on it, no weight, just buzzing it across the top like a, like a, a, uh, a buzz bait almost. So uh, all I did is basically just kind of expand that into bigger baits and you can use any other swim bait. I just love 
the balance and the action that the rage swimmer has. And that, that 575 is not an oversized giant bait. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty long, but it's not near as big as a lot of the, the other baits out there. So hopefully, and we're working on it, hopefully we're, we're coming out with some bigger versions as well. But, you know, this way I just have uh, an unlimited number of colors. The bait, you know, it's a lot less expensive than some of these other uh, swim baits that are out there, and it performs exceptionally well. It's just a, it's a great tool.